So pretty versatile guitar this, I think. Fantastically distinctive guitar. Lou Reed played one of these at, at one point. Oh, and that bloke from The Strokes, he played one as well. And you can hear the two guitars dueling and, and you can hear the difference, the way that the, it cuts through, whereas the other blokes, I can't remember his name, the other blokes doesn't, sorry. Sorry, Thin Lizzy fans. Any excuse for me to go and buy another guitar is a good excuse. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again. Welcome. So today we are looking at another, I suppose, I don't know if you'd call this an affordable guitar or not. It's 569 pounds, so it's, it's a lot more affordable than some, let's say. Um, it's a proper guitar, it's not a copy of anything. It's this fantastic looking, um, if you don't mind me saying so, Fantastic looking Epiphone Riviera. I think the actual designation for this is ES360TD. I think there's a label inside that says that. Oh no, well, yeah, it says E360TD. Yeah, oh, there you go. E360TD uh, Riviera. So this was released in 1962, I believe. Um, so it followed on from the Sheraton and um, the Casino. Uh, and it's uh, it's a center block guitar, the same as the Sheraton and the 335. Um, so this particular model is made of maple. It's got a layered maple top and back and sides and a maple center block. And uh, it's got a mahogany neck. Mahogany setting neck, as you can see there. Beautiful piece of wood, isn't it? Such an attractive, really nice really nice figuring under the royal tan sunburst this is royal tan sunburst it's it's a proper treat for the eyes oh, love it this is kind of one of the things that caught my eye when i first saw this this model has been out for a little while now um maybe a year or so um and I'd kind of, I'd kind of fancied it, um, and and then just recently, you know, we'd done the the reviews of the three three five, and the Emily Wolf Sheraton, and then the Casino, and I thought, well, look, you know what, we've got to get one of these in as well, to uh, to to create us a nice little set, and then I'm sure at some point in in the future we can do a little four way shootout, perhaps that'd be fun. Um, anyway, any excuse for me to go and buy. Another guitar is a good excuse. And here it is. And I'm pleased I did because it looks great. And I have played this. I've done the playing stuff. And I can tell you it sounds fantastic as well. So um, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that shortly so that we can, you know, we can all hear what it sounds like. Because um, it's got a little bit different from the 335 in the casino. Um, so it's definitely... It's, it's its own thing, this, as you'll, as you'll hopefully discover. So, but let's just go through a few more little specs first. So we've covered all that stuff. I won't go, there's not too much sort of deep diving we can go into. Uh, I don't think I'll pull the pickups today. Um, we're not, you know, we can't obviously look at the wiring without spending a day or two um, faffing around and we just ain't got time for that. So what we'll do really is we'll, we'll measure the neck uh, so that we can see what the profile's like and what, what that measures. And uh, we'll, we'll measure the pickup outputs. And um, we'll just talk about what we've got. So let's start with, as I say, the, the, the neck profile is a, a medium rounded C, they call it. It's a glued in set neck, mahogany. Uh, this has got the heel joint there. You can just about see that. And... Uh, just about to see the scarf joint there as well. It's got Epiphone Deluxe, or Cluson style, um, metal button, metal button tuners, 
with press in bushings. All lovely. The headstock on this is what they call the Epiphone uh, sloped dove wing. That's called an Epiphone sloped dove wing. Medium jumbo frets, graph tech, new bone nut. Fretboard looks like it could do with a bit of a bit of an oil up. A bit of gunk on the glue on the fret there. Apart from that, here you go. See if I can get that to pick that all up. Apart from that, there's I can't feel any sharp frets at all on it. And as I say, I've played this quite extensively. It did take a while to settle down tuning wise. I'm wondering if that was something to do with this this tailpiece, which um yeah, so this is called the frequencer. Sounds like a TV show, doesn't it? And that's weird, obviously. Um, but and no doubt it gives it quite a distinctive um, sound. I think it does. You'll you'll hear that in a bit. Um, it's an attractive looking thing. Um, it goes into a standard Epiphone um, lock tone nickel plated bridge. And then you've got these, these pickups. So these are mini humbuckers. These are mini humbuckers. They are humbucking pickups, um, but they're mini ones. Um, they're, not, um, they're not P90s. A lot of people think they are. They're not. They're in between, in sound wise, they're in between a, a, a P90 probably and a, um, and a humbucker. And they've got a little bit of a, a kind of a, a a, a single coil, more of a single coil bite to them as well than probably that uh, the P90 has. Um, but yeah, they, they they really cut through the middle. I really like mini humbuckers. If you've ever never tried a Les Paul with mini humbuckers on, you should. Um, you, you'll find that, you know, Les Pauls are quite quite well known for being a little bit muddy sometimes. A Les Paul with mini humbuckers is great because it hasn't got that muddiness. And I think um, I think it was Scott Gorman in Thin Lizzy had a played a Les Paul with mini humbuckers, and you can hear the two guitars dueling, and and you can hear the difference with the way that the it cuts through. Whereas the other blokes, I can't remember his name, the other blokes doesn't. Sorry, sorry, Thin Lizzy fans. Uh, I hope I got Scott Gorman right. Anyway. I can just cut this bit if I didn't, it doesn't matter. It didn't exist. I didn't make such an enormous faux pas with one of the greatest ever rock band gods of all time for boomers, obviously. Okay, so um, moving on, standard you know pickup configuration, three-way Epiphone toggle. It's not a switchcraft, it's Epiphone. CTS potentiometers though. Black top hat knobs with metal inserts and a nice three ply pit guard with the Epiphone foil logo on it. Um, it's a very handsome guitar and um, I think it sounds great as well. So let's have a little listen to what it sounds like and then we'll, we'll, we'll run in some data so we can see what it weighs and, and what their neck measures. So uh, over to me earlier. Cheers. Right, so here we are. Okay. So, unplugged. So these are the strings that it came with. I haven't changed them. I think they're quite light. I've got a feeling they're, they're a little bit lighter than I use. Maybe, maybe nine. I normally use 10 gauge. Uh, but it might just be because there's all this going on here but I had to mess around I had to set up a little bit this it was a uh, it wasn't very well set up at the box so the action was way high so I had to lower the action the intonation was was well out on on these three strings um, so I've had to sort that out and uh, give it a bit of a play seems to settle down now got a nice nice open sound isn't it 
really nice and bright. Sounds great. So let's have a listen to it plugged in and see, see what it sounds like. So I'm using the Fender Super Reverb today. Um, I thought I'd give that a go and straight away, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> That's uh, just back the volumes off a little bit there. That's on both pickups. And on the uh, bridge pickup, it's. And the neck. Let's just whack them right up. So let's um, just see if the tone controls work. Yeah, it seems to be, it's kind of gradually tapering off. Nice taper, sounds good. Let's try that on the... Um Um, clone on it. Let's um, let's have a little play, shall we? See what we can. See what we can coax out of it. Just back those off a little bit. go. It's eight pound one ounce. Three point six eight kilos. Nice. 
So, looking at the pickup outputs, let's make sure they're all turned all the way up. Uh, on the uh, bridge pickup, 7.55 kilo ohms. And on the neck, 6.23. So here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck measurements and profile at the 12th fret. distinctive. Lou Reed played one of these at, at one point, I believe. Um, doesn't get any cooler than that, does it? Oh, and that bloke from The Strokes, he played one as well. There you go, sounds nice, doesn't it? I really, um, really enjoyed this. You can, I kind of found you could, it's more inspiring to play a kind of lighter stuff on it. Um, you get a real, you get, you get more of a sense of the acoustic sound on this, I think, than you do on the, the 335 that we, we did recently. Um, it's quite different to the casino anyway. So I would say that this, com you, we compare this more closely with a Sheraton and with a, and with a uh, 335. And, and we'll, we'll do a comparison at a later stage, I think, so that we can kind of pinpoint the differences. It's kind of a thing on its own, this, I think. And I think the, the pickups kind of make that happen. You know, it, it stands apart because it's got these mini humbuckers, which... I think of vastly underrated pickups personally, um, and uh, as as I, I, I hopefully you can hear. I mean, I have recorded this out of order, so I don't know what I'm going. What I, I haven't edited it yet, obviously. So I haven't put. I don't know what I put before this bit, and I don't know what I'm putting after yet until I get into the edit suite. But um, what I can tell you happens at some point, either before or after is that we turn up the wick and you can hear, you know, you can hear how it takes drive and it will give you those Les Paul-like tones as well as as nice stuff. You know, it will give you jangle, gives a nice jangle and it, and it will drive really well. So it will give you a nice creamy drive as well. So pretty versatile guitar, this, I think. Uh, fantastically distinctive guitar. Um, I... I, th 
I prefer the look of this to, than to a 335, and I think it's got a little bit more originality about it. Um, I think we, I'm looking forward to actually getting into doing a, doing a com proper comparison, actually, with, with the 335 and a, and a Sheraton and a Casino. I think that'd be fun. And, uh, yeah. It's certainly... It's certainly a guitar that you'll want to look at a lot. Um, I know that a few of you guys have commented on it because you've seen it lurking in the, in the background on the stand uh, for the last couple of weeks because you know, I've had it a couple of weeks now. And um, the uh, been a few comments, people eyeing it up. It's great. And people saying that it's, they're, they're trying to get hold of one, but they can't. So, um, yeah. Nice guitar. Nice, nice guitar. I think what we'll do is we'll leave the last word to the guitar and we can we'll we'll hear it some more and we'll we'll drop in some close-up shots, some more close-up shots so you can have another little perv at this little minx. And then we'll um well and then we'll see you again next week, I hope. Thanks again for joining us. Ta-ra.